protected from opinions you don't like? Then you better go somewhere else, because this is not a safe space. This is American Viewpoints with Mike Ferguson. It has been a little while, not that long, but a little while since the whole environmental and social governance controversy has been has been in the headlines. Obviously, there are other things that have pushed it out of the headlines, but also are we seeing maybe a shift away from the narrative that we've been getting for years? Well, maybe. I'm Mike Ferguson. Thank you for staying with us here on American Viewpoints. I am now joined by Brandon Brandon Arnold. He is the executive vice president of the National Taxpayers Union. And uh, Brandon, one of the blog posts that that you wrote recently over at NTU's website, which we'll give out here in just a little bit, had to do with some of these large companies and ESG and their investing in the way they manage their money, uh, because it looks like some of some of them are pivoting away from that, as you said in the headline of your article. First of all, let's start with. What is significant about a company saying, you know what, we're going to change some of our investment rules, some of our holdings rules and get away from these standards that we had before? Well, I think, you know, for the most part, part, private companies should do what private companies want to do. But I think when you're talking about state actors, whether that's the federal government or state governments or whatever, I think they need to largely stay out of this fight. What we've seen with the big announcement last week is these large companies that had supported some side initiatives, some nonprofits and other and other groups that are aiming to crack down on, on climate change or reduce climate change or so forth. They were spending their money, um, you know, it's their private dollars. They can do so if they see fit, but they were spending their dollars on these organizations, which they have since pulled out of. And, you know, the problem I have with some of these organizations, these these climate change oriented organizations is oftentimes they call for things that I would think <laughs> consider bad policy, higher taxes, stricter regulations and so forth. So there are some concerning elements to being involved in, in these types of organizations. And the fact that they're pulling out to me suggests that they are recognizing that there's a lot of folks out there that think companies ought to stick to what they do best, and that is make stuff, offer services, provide financial products, whatever that thing that they do is, should be their primary area of of, uh, emphasis and not wading into social, environmental, and other issues where you have a lot of division and a lot of disagreement amongst Americans. And a lot of pressure has been on these companies through media, social media, other things saying, if you're large and if you're wealthy, you have a responsibility to use your platform. And I'm using the air quotes here. Use your platform to to promote, you know, whatever the cause is, you know, environmental causes or, you know, racial uh, equity causes or, or whatever they are. And so the argument being that they're a private company, but they should be pressured into using this. What are some of the organizations that they're backing away from and pulling out of and maybe getting back to just doing business, doing business? Yeah, I mean, the big one is called Climate Action 100 Plus. That's the one that we saw the announcement about last week. There's certainly other groups out there that they've supported over the years that dabble in all sorts of not just environmental issues, but social issues and um, gender based issues and so forth. And, you know, listen, the private company, the companies, if that's what they want to do with their money, then they are uh, they should be allowed to do so. But I think they need to recognize something that the, the goat recognized years ago. I'm speaking, of course, of Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan, many years ago, you may have seen this, said uh, he was asked to endorse a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate in North, Senate in North Carolina. And he said, I'm not going to do it. He said, whether I agree with him or, or not is is immaterial. But I'm not going to support a Democrat because guess what? Republicans buy shoes too. <laughs> and Republicans go to Chicago Bulls games too. I'm going to stay out of the fray here. I'm going to stay out of politics and focus on what on what I do, which is becoming the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. So I think companies have increasingly adopted that Michael Jordan type philosophy, which is let's let's make stuff. Let's offer services. Let's not wade into issues where we're going to Maybe some of our clients and some of our consumers are going to like and alike, but some of them maybe don't. You're talking about some big companies that recent change with some of them backing away. We're talking, you know, JP Morgan Chase, State Street Global Investors. You're talking about some really large companies. So you're talking about some big money. Is this a market response? I mean, is this a response to people saying, 
we don't want you violating that Michael Jordan rule or, or is this some other business pressure that's been on these companies? Because there's been a big pushback, you know, when it comes to these companies buying into the political activism or the social activism. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's a combination of things. And, and there's certainly some business interest here. Like I said, somebody said some of these groups are advocating for policies that may hurt the bottom line of certain companies. So when they see that, yeah, they want the credit for doing, quote unquote, the right thing amongst consumers. But they also have to look at their bottom line. If if these groups that they're participating in are calling for for higher taxes, for instance, well, guess what? That cuts into their ability to innovate, innovate and create new products and deliver things to their customers that they want. So I think there's kind of a push and pull there. And it's a tough needle to thread. We've seen companies obviously take some really huge missteps in this space here. The most notable would be Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light did this uh, ad campaign or, or, or whatever on social media with a transgender individual and got a huge amount of backlash for that. Anyone that went into a a liquor store soon thereafter would see mountains and stacks of Bud Light and virtually no Coors Light or Miller Light or what for or, or what have you. And, and there you see the private sector, private individ- individuals expressing their frustration with a company, which is how I think it ought to work. You know, if if you don't like what a per- what a company is doing, if you don't like the causes that they're supporting or the way that they're running their business, then you can vote with your dollars and choose not to do business with them. Where it gets a little trickier is what I've seen from some state governments and permits in particular, but also the federal government to some extent, in which they're doing kind of the opposite side of a coin to what California and some left-leaning states are doing and saying, we're going to boycott certain companies with taxpayer dollars. To me, that's going way too far. We shouldn't have the government placing ideological litmus tests on companies. We should leave that to, to private citizens who can vote again with their dollars and who can choose which companies they want to do business with and which ones they would rather not. Yeah. And that was uh, where I wanted to uh, kind of go in the next part of the conversation is the public versus the private. And by the way, just as a, another note, I think a lot of people, when they stepped away from Bud Light, just figured out that, you know, Yingling, no Yingling tastes better. It's just a better product. <laughs> now they had a chance to visit it or, or a visit to check it out. We are visiting with Brandon Arnold from the national taxpayers union. Okay. So you mentioned like some of the state governments, what you're talking about here with these companies is truly private sector, you know, as far as they've got the ability to make their statement, they've got the ability to respond, respond to the market reactions as well. Uh, when it comes to the ESG debate and the sort of politically correct uh, investing or regulations debate, uh, are there any concerns right now with government pushing or coercing companies into having some sort of ESG standard standard anywhere in the country right now that we should be aware of? Yeah, and I think there's concerning policies being enacted by both the left and the right. And and it's it's really unfortunate uh, to see it happening on both fronts here. But the left has been doing this for a long time. You know, you look at California years ago, they with their public pension funds, they for, forced the divesture of tobacco holdings. So basically, the, the, the large pension funds, these are the largest pension funds in the world. We're talking about CalPERS and the state uh, teachers fund in California. They said, well, you can't do business. You can't own securities for tobacco companies because we don't like tobacco companies. And uh, guess guess what? It costs pensioners billions of dollars because those tobacco companies actually are profitable. They make money. And when you when you block them out, then then you just cost pensioners a lot of money, billions of dollars. It's it's foolish. And since then, you've seen similar efforts like, hey, let's stop doing business with oil and gas companies. Let's stop doing stop doing business with firearms companies. Let's start doing do, stop doing business with all sorts of companies that we don't like. And there's been more pushback, even from folks that are traditionally on the left, because they're like, eh, I don't know about that. Maybe we should actually be making sure that pensioners have a large nest egg that they can retire on. Uh, in, in, uh, instead of making political stances here. And where do we go to learn more about what you all are doing? I found this on your all's blog. So what's the website, the social media, and where can we find what you're working on? NTU, National Taxpayers Union, ntu.org uh, on the web. And we're on social media, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, we're there. Just look just look up National Taxpayers Union. Brandon, are you on social media as well? Uh, I've, I've actually divested myself of social media, so I am not. Good but for you, you can find our, our company on there, our organization on there for sure. Don't blame you one bit. Brandon, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mike. 
just ahead, here's a big question the Supreme Court's going to be taking up here in the next day or next day or so. Should social media companies be allowed to censor? Should they be allowed to be biased? Get a perspective on that just ahead right here on American Viewpoints.